Hello, this is Bob Steele. In this video, we will take a look at Chapter 1, The Changing Role of Managerial Accounting in the Dynamic Business Environment. Learn Objective Number 1, Define Managerial Accounting and Describe Its Role in the Management Process. So, define managerial accounting. So, managerial accounting is the process of identifying, measuring, analyzing, interpreting, and communicating information. So, it used to be that we probably would have thought of managerial accounting as a department in and of itself that would be doing financial uh, analysis in some way. Notice that these days the financial accounting is, this idea is really prevalent in many different departments of, a, of an organization. So many different departments of an organization will use these managerial accounting ideas and these managerial accounting ideas will be uh, enforced or input in order to help to make basically decisions. So this is going to be a way to make decisions generally. So whenever we're uh, making decisions, first we have to identify what we want to make the decision on, what do we want to take a look at, then we need to measure it. And this is an area where the managerial accounting techniques can be very useful. If we can quantify the way we measure something, that will make it much easier. So many of us, even in things such as our yearly review that we might get from our supervisor, often are going to have some kind of quantifiable measurement even student uh, surveys or even the surveys for customer satisfaction. We're going to try to quantify these things in order to measure those things. And then, then we can analyze that. If we have good measurable data, we can then analyze it in a more efficient way. And then, of course, we're going to interpret what came up from that information. Then we want to communicate that information in such a way that uh, it's relevant, it's understandable, and we can then make practical decisions based on that information. So this process of making decisions, uh, making goals, planning towards the future, if we can go through this process and make those goals measurable and therefore analyzable, and then we can then interpret that information in a relevant way because of the way that has been set up, that is going to be uh, crucial to both any types of decision-making processes within an organization, as well as the process of receiving information from a supervisor in uh, these types of formats. So it's really good to know for any uh, area within a business. So learn objective two, explain four fundamental management processes that help organizations attain their goals. So if we break it down the business to its uh, basic parts, what we have, of course, are resources. Those resources are going to be either uh, tangible resources, such as raw materials and whatnot, and they could be intangible, such as patents and goodwill and things like that. We're going to have people. We're going to hire people, of course, within the organization. And then the management goal is to manage these uh, resources, make decisions based on those resources. So the management process basically would be then... Uh, to make decisions. The book gives an example of Walt Disney and one critical decision on Walt Disney, a, a large decision, was to put a new theme park in Florida. So there was a decision at one time, should we put a theme park in Florida? What should that theme park look like in Florida? Then once that decision had been made, the next step of course is planning. So now we're making more decisions, but we're making decisions that go towards the original decision. We're making plans, we're making blueprints, that go towards that original decision in order to achieve and fulfill that goal. Once the theme park has been put into place, then we're going to do directing. So directing is what many people I think think of as a manager that's going to be like the day-to-day -day manager. So when we're running the day-to-day -day operations, the person who's going around, uh, you know, putting out all the fires is basically doing the directing process of the managing process, doing the day-to-day, -day, how are we going to, do we have enough cashiers in there, are the lines um, I, I manned, you know, in the, in the theme park and things like that. And then the controlling would be the analysis. So now we've had the theme park open for a while. How are we doing? Let's do some comparisons. Are we going towards the objective that we want to go, go towards? And that's going to be the comparison, the controlling aspect of the managerial process. Learn objective number three. Learn objective three. List and describe five objectives of managerial accounting system. Okay, so whenever we're talking about managerial accounting, everything that we do is going to fall into one or more of these core objectives. So providing information for decision making and planning. So when we put that theme park into place, that big decision that we made, there's going to be a lot of analysis involved in that decision as to whether it's going to be financially beneficial to do that. Of course, that's a long-term decision. 
We're going to have long-term estimates in terms of how much revenue it's going to generate in order to see if that is a good decision to make. And then we have assisting managers in directing and controlling activities. So we want to be able to put data together in order to do the daily directing and then the controlling, the analysis of that activity is going to have to be put together in some kind of way, hopefully quantifiably, so that we can then analyze that information. Motivating managers and other employees towards organizational goals. So we need to put together information to uh, help to, to motivate the employees. And notice that employees aren't always going to have the same objectives, of course, as the business. So our goal is to try to align ob objectives as much as possible so that employees are motivated towards uh, the same type of goals that are the goals for the company. Measuring performance and subunits, activities, managers, and other employees. So in an attempt to, to align up the goals and see how well the employees are doing, we're going to measure that information as well. How are, the, how are the employees doing? How are the subunits doing? Reward those that are doing well and see how to improve those that need improvement. Assessing the organization's competitive position. We're also going to assess how we're doing in relation to the market that we are in and make assessments in terms of uh, what changes may we need to make or innovations that need to happen in order to better position ourselves within the market. We could use a balanced scorecard to try to break out these different segments. So we might want to think of managerial accounting. It's going to be broken out into different areas that we need to analyze. And one uh, way to think about that is the balanced scorecard. Score card. So we could have financial goals, which is the one that's probably most familiar to us from our financial accounting classes. And in the financial goals, it could be two how to look how do we look to our owners so of course the shareholders are, are going to look at us in a holistic fashion uh, how much worth is the company worth and how are they doing and that's what we've looked at basically through the financial accounting we have the customer perspective how we look to our customers so we want to get feedback from the customers and look at it from that angle as well and there's a different question in terms of how we're going to measure that how we're going to quantify that how we're going to you know compare that to other industries or, or how can we compare departments and we have operations uh, perspective in which activities must we excel so what are going to be the core things that we really need to do well at in our particular organization innovation uh, perspective how can we continue to improve any business that is a going concern and is looking for long-term uh, stability needs to always be looking towards the future in terms of what will change it's obviously a very changing environment and we need to always be looking towards the future and thinking what is out there that we need to do in order to innovate and be on the uh, competitive edge of changes that will inevitably happen. Learn Objective 4. Learn Objective 4 explain the major differences between a managerial and financial accounting. So the two types of accounting that we've taken a look at, we've started off, everybody started off probably with financial accounting here. So financial accounting being the creation of the financial statements for the most part here. And the financial accounting is going to be used generally for external users. So the reason we put together financial statements is often for the stockholders or a bank that we need an audit or the IRS needs the tax returns. And those are going to be towards external users. If we're a publicly traded company, then that means that you know, normal people, the public's like 401k plans and whatnot might be invested in that company. And therefore, we need standardization in the financial statements when we're talking about publicly traded companies. So that's generally for external, for, for managerial accounting, on the other hand, we're talking about information that's going to be used for the decision making, planning and controlling an organization's operations. So therefore, it's all for the internal use. All this information is for internal use, and therefore, it is not heavily regulated. We're going to use best practices. We're going to, have to talk about what, if, what is the best way to do things, not because, such as over here on the financial side, because it's regulated and we have to do it that way, but because those are the best practices in which to plan, make decisions, and control operations. So if we break that down into a chart, it would look something like this. We have, of course, our managerial account on the left, the financial on the right. 
users of the information for managerial accounting, it's the manager. So any question that says, you know, who's the main user for managerial accounting, the manager. That's that's who we're making the information for. On the other hand, financial accounting, why are we putting the information together for interested parties outside of the organizations, usually stockholders uh, or a bank or the, or the IRS. We're trying to get a loan from the bank. Regulations. Uh, managerial accounting, not required and unregulated since it's intended only for management. So we're just trying to make decisions on what to do with our business. So that data isn't going to be regulated because we're not giving it to the public. We're not giving it to, to the public uh, in order to make their decisions. We're doing it internally to make our decisions. We're, on the other hand, the financial accounting requires uh, required and must conform to generally accepted accounting principles if we're a publicly traded company regulated by the by the financial accounting standards boards and to a lesser extent the securities exchange commission so financial so publicly traded companies because they they are publicly traded must conform so that the uh the the public knows what to expect on them and can compare company to con company so we need standardization there therefore the uh, financial statements are going to be regulated by GAAP uh, and the managerial uh, information is not because it's not going to be given out. So source of the data. So for managerial accounting, the organization's basic accounting system plus various other sources such as rates of effective products, manufactured physical quantities of material and labor used in production, occupancy rates in hotels and hospitals, and average takeoff delays. So we're going to try to quantify data. You know, you might have is where you got the, the accountant out there with a stopwatch measuring how long it takes to put a widget together. So <laughs> that might be included as part of the data in order to assess the information. The financial data, almost exclusively drawn from the organization's basic accounting system, which accumulates financial information. And then the nature of reports and procedures. Reports for managerial accounting. Reports often focus on subunits within the organization, such as departments, divisions, geographical regions, or product lines based on combination of historical data estimates and projections of future events. So therefore, the managerial accounting, we're trying to segment uh, the business in order to see how individual segments are doing, how are individual employees doing, how are individual departments doing, and therefore make decisions that we can find to improve these uh, areas. On the other hand, financial accounting reports focus on the enterprise in its entirety based almost exclusively on historical transaction data. So the financial statements, when we're talking to investors, of course, they may not want to know how well, you know, one tiny department is doing within the Disney organization. What they want to know is, is the Disney organization as a whole healthy and um, therefore should I invest in them, <laughs> you know? So they're going to focus on basically as a whole type of information for the most part. Learning objective number five, describe the accounting and financial structure in an organization. So uh, we have both line and staff positions. So a line position is going to be defined as directly involved in achieving the basic objectives of an organization. So for example, a production supervisor in a manufacturing plant, meaning that the production supervisor is involved directly with the production of whatever it is the manufacturing plant manufactures. They're directly involved in the making of the plant's manufactured product. On the other hand, the staff position supports and assess line positions. So a cost accountant in a manufacturing plant. See, the cost accountant is not actually involved in manufacturing what it is that the manufacturing plant manufactures. The cost accountant is there to support the activities of the manufacturing plant by crunching the numbers and seeing uh, where improvements can be made based on that analysis and then the decision making that stems from it. And that's it for the first uh, PowerPoint. Thanks.